so we've got here examples one from the uh, antiderivatives section and this says find the general solutions of the differential equation a differential equation just means that you're going to have to integrate to find the antiderivative um, there is a course on differential equation where that is what you do in the entire course is just you're given all kinds of complex um, equations and your job is to find the in the antiderivative of that equation um, it gets complicated you can do systems of equations and have to find the uh, antiderivatives that satisfy the whole system of equations it gets complicated in that class but for us it's just something small that allow us to use the rules to practice our um, anti-differentiation so what you do is you integrate both sides so if I'm gonna integrate this side I end up with the integral of this with respect to dx the integral of this side with respect to dx notice that something happens here this cancels with this and you get the integral with respect to y but of what remember you always have a coefficient of one in here because if I multiply one multiply this by one or multiply this by one it doesn't change the value at all and we know that from before if you have a one now remember we're integrating with respect to y not x so when I do the rule I'm gonna use y's not x's I end up with that constant times y instead of that constant times x which means it's just y equals okay here I'm going to actually do a step here before I continue so because I have a 7 there I'm going to use one of those rules and take the 7 out okay so it's just like a constant multiplier then I'm gonna apply the power rule to this portion so the power rule says I'm going to um, increase the power by 1 so I'm going to have x to the 3 fourths plus 1 and then I have to divide by that new power now this part you usually get you'll figure out how to go a little bit faster where you don't necessarily need to write this step you just go straight into the answer but remember if I've taken the integration and if I've applied the rule then I no longer need to write the integral symbol with the dx but I do need to write the plus constant okay to make it the general solution there so let's see what do we get when we do this we end up with 4 fourths plus 3 fourths is 7 fourths over 7 fourths well that 7 fourths can actually be changed into multiplying by the reciprocal because that's how you divide fractions is you multiply by the reciprocal and I kind of didn't leave myself enough room here it looks like but I'm gonna take some of this space over here and so then what I end up with is y equals the sevens will cancel and I get 4x to the 7 fourths plus c this being my final answer now you can always check your answers if I take the derivative of y remember from implicit differentiation if you take the derivative of y you end up with dy dx if you take the derivative of this it's 7 fourths times 4 which will give you 7 and if you subtract 1 from the exponent you end up with 3 fourths if I take the derivative of this constant I end up with 0 so this is in fact the true anti general solution for the antiderivative of this now for part B we're gonna do the same thing so we're gonna take the integral on both sides with respect to X and we're going to do the same thing as we did before with the dy here we're going to take the 4 out and then the integral of dy is just y and then here we're going to end up getting x to the negative 5 plus 1 over negative 5 plus 1 and because I've now applied the antiderivative rules I no longer need to write the plus c I mean I no longer need to write the integral in the dx but I do need to write a plus c now just real quick notice that I did not put a plus c here 
It's kind of like the same thing that happened with rule number five in the lecture. If I put a plus C on the left hand side, but I want to get Y by itself, I'm going to have to subtract that C over to the right hand side. Then you're just going to have two constants over here. They may be different from each other, but when you combine them, you're still going to end up with some general constant, okay? So that's why when I'm doing the integration, I don't put a plus C on this side because I want Y to be by itself. Technically, there is a C, but then it eventually gets moved over here, and then this turns into one big fat C, okay? Um, so you don't need to put them twice. When it comes to multiple terms or an equation, you just need to write 1 plus C, and that's it. Now let's simplify this problem. So we get 4 um, x to the negative 4 over negative 4 plus C. If we reduce that, we get negative x to the negative 4 plus C. And so, oops, yeah, that's right. So this is my antiderivative. Now, if I were to take the derivative of it to check it, negative four would come down, giving me a positive four, and then I would subtract one from the exponent, giving me a negative five exponent, and then the derivative of c is just zero. So this, in fact, is the antiderivative. Example two is very similar, but in example two, we do have to manipulate these so that we can apply our integration rules. So. For this one, just like when we were taking derivatives, you would never leave a radical like that. You would always write it in its um, exponent form. So we do need to have it in its exponent form to take an antiderivative as well. So if we apply that power rule, we're gonna get x to the 1 9th plus one divided by 1 9th plus one. And because I've actually applied the integration rule, I need to actually put the plus c. So I'm here when I add one, I'm gonna get x to the 10 ninths over 10 ninths plus c. And how do we divide fractions? We multiply by the reciprocal plus c. And so then this is the antiderivative of that function. Now, if I wanna check it, I would bring the 10 ninths down, which would reduce with this 9 tenths, giving me a coefficient of one. And if I take one away from the exponent, I would get 1 ninth, which is the square, the ninth root of x. And if I take the derivative of c, I would get 0, which is why there's no second term inside there. Okay, here's the next example. Let's work on this one. So again, we need to rewrite this. And this one does take a little bit more to rewrite. So it becomes 7 times 4x to the fourth, negative 4, because it was in the denominator. So then we have seven and we need to bring this negative four to both parts. So this will be four to the negative four and x to the negative four. So then the numbers you can simplify. This is seven over four to the fourth. This is x to the negative fourth. What is four to the fourth? I do not know. I know four to the third is 64, but let's see. 4 to the 4th is 256. And then we can bring out our coefficient. And then now we can apply that power rule. So we get 7 over 256 times x to the negative 4 plus 1 over negative 4 plus 1. And since I've done the integration, I can put my plus c. So I've got seven over 256 times x to the negative three over negative three plus c. And eventually if I multiply that um, times negative three, I end up with negative seven over 768 x to the negative three plus c. And since the problem was given to me in fractions, I should probably write my answer in a fraction form. Same thing goes for um, part A. Since they gave me the problem in radicals, it probably would be best that I give them the answer in radical form. Okay, so this would actually be um, an acceptable answer. The computer may accept this one, but just to be formal, whatever form they give you your problem in, that's probably the form you wanna give them the answer in. 
Um, so same thing here. The computer may accept this, but because they gave me the problem in a fraction, I'm going to go ahead and write my answer as a fraction. So x to the third would be downstairs. And for the fractions, usually you can put the negative up top or you can put it out in the front. Um, just as long as you don't put it in both the numerator and the denominator because then that changes the sign of the, the value of the problem.